The lesson rang clear. Superior hardware had not been defeated in a duel against equals. It had been cornered by nature itself. In that minute, the environment granted the skies not to the radar crews with billion-dollar programs, but to the silent intruders that understood how to fly beneath notice. Olenia Air Base sat in darkness, the Arctic sun still below the horizon, when defenders leaned on their radars and missile batteries with the confidence that steel and electronics would hold the line. What they did not count on was the atmosphere itself turning traitor. At minus 12 degrees, a strange temperature inversion settled over the tundra. The surface air, colder and denser than the air above, bent electromagnetic waves across the horizon. Radars read the distortion as incoming aircraft, entire formations that weren't there. Screens lit up with targets that existed only in physics, not reality. Men inside the cabin stared at ghosts, hesitant to commit missiles to empty sky, already trapped in a battle where the weather chose the rules. The phenomenon is called atmospheric ducting. It turns the sky into a hall of mirrors, bending signals and multiplying them. Defenders saw wing shapes darting in and out of range, but when they fired, nothing appeared. An old P-18 spoon rest radar dug out from Soviet stockpiles should have tracked anything crossing in from altitude. But in these conditions, its decades-old vacuum tube amplifiers went blind. It was designed to catch lumbering jets in the Cold War, not tiny quadcopters crawling low under ducting effects. Operators tried to switch frequencies, change gain, adjust filters, 